Interview and Job Search Strategies at Work. Today I'd like to talk to you about a, a skill set that is necessary. It has a necessary function in any job, basically. And um, you, you see it all the time. You maybe just don't recognize it. And it's satellite. It's microwave. They have a valid, uh, they're, they're looking for folks all the time that know that technology or they can train to, to understand that, to, to get a job. So you've seen it, you've driven by, uh, you're in a car, you're in a bus, you're on a bike, whatever. You drive by houses and you see there's a dish outside somebody's house. And you're like, okay, it says iDirect, or uh, sorry, DirecTV, not iDirect, DirecTV. Uh, or it says HughesNet some, in some regard, some cases. That's either going to be um, satellite internet or it's going to be like, um, t television, like um, satellite TV, basically, cable TV. And and so the principles are kind of similar a little bit, um, and it works this way. From the antenna, the antenna is at your house or at the house. It's a small dish. It's like three foot or whatever. It almost looks like a bird bath, right? If you take a bird back and point it somewhere, that's kind of what it looks like. And then from, from that, there's like an IF cable. And then from the IF cable goes into the house uh, and then plugs into what could also be a coax cable as well, but it plugs into the modem. The modem, then from the modem, there's like a LAN port. And that LAN port uh, plugs into your router. From the router, of course, it comes into your computer or your devices, etc. And so the other way, let's talk about the other way, how it works. From the antenna in the at the house, it goes to the sky. So it shoots the signal to the sky, and and then and in the sky, I don't know, twenty three million miles or no, twenty three thousand miles, sixty three thousand like that, miles away in space, there's a satellite. You probably have seen satellites on TV, and it's just it's just like a it's a transmit receiver. It's really like a it, it's almost like a, a um, Almost like a relay, basically. You know, it takes one signal in and transfers it down to the Earth somewhere else. So it might have two, two receiver or uh, a transmitter receiver and then another transmitter receiver. So from your antenna goes to space to the satellite. From the satellite, it goes down to say an ISP or a. Um, place that has like this, these giant antennas. You've probably seen them before. They're like these 60 foot dishes. You've probably seen them on TV or you've probably seen, seen them somewhere that you uh, have been, but they receives all those um, signals. So the reason it's so large is that it has to be able to receive multiple uh, carriers, multiple carriers. So a carrier is like a signal carrier basically. So it has to receive all that signal it's for multiple locations, by the way. So it's not only your neighbor, your friend, your, you know, in your community, they have dishes. It's everybody else has a satellite dish that or antenna rather that points to that, that satellite and then down to the other location. So when you get internet, you're actually getting it from, so that big dish on the other side, that's hooked into the internet. That's the one that give, you know, the internet comes from there. That's how it works. So it's just a relay of information through um through the satellite so you know there's other way of course i'm going to talk about the other way is microwave that's another uh way to transmit information from long distances it's cheaper than fiber by the way it's cheaper than and you couldn't transfer um it would you know you couldn't transfer uh a couple, you know 10 miles of information via a cat a cat five or Cat six, Cat seven, I think they are now, because the um, you'd have to have a repeater for that that box. Plus, if somebody cuts a cable, <laughs> you know your whole internet's down. This is not cost effective. Neither is fiber, right? Because you might be going across the highway. Um, so if, so let's say if in somebody's farm or farmer's field, they have um, microwave uh, dish. So if you you've probably seen it on the highway, you drive down the highway and you'll see these big uh, mobile towers, right? 
So on the mobile tower, they'll have like a dish, small dish. Again, bird bird bath, you know, turned uh, sideways. And that is pointing to another location somewhere else, maybe five, ten miles away, whatever. And, you know, that's how the other side gets inter- information or internet. You, you've probably seen them on train tracks as well. Um, they don't look like parabolic antennas or sometimes bird dishes. They might look like a, uh, you ever seen the wind sock on a, on an airfield? Um, they kind of look like that except they're plastic. And so they're just, basically it's just the, the trains sending a signal out on the train or even the train passes somewhere like a certain checkpoint, basically on a track. And there's a signal. Okay. Hey, trains here sends it down the line to the other, uh, uh, antenna and says, okay, oh, okay, good. It does a function Whether that's put down the, um, the railroad, uh, the, uh, warning lights when the, when, you know, think, Hey, the train's coming. They put down those, those barrier things as a train's going through, could be that, could be information, could be maybe um, a distance, like, uh, okay, trains reach this point, okay, it, you know, it feeds back to wherever, whatever the central command is, I think in, I want to say it's in Nebraska, or Wyoming, I think it's Nebraska, actually, I forget the city in Nebraska, but a lot of those the central command places are there for trains, uh, anyway, um, so that's, that's, that's microwave basically. So the, I'll just tell you something about the microwave dishes, the bigger, the microwave dish, the lower the frequency. So it's a KU band or a C band, uh, frequency, um, the, sh- uh, shorter the distance. And so it's like 10 miles or whatever. Uh, no, excuse me. Sorry. The longer the distance. So the bigger the dish. The lower the frequency, the longer the the, the longer the the signal, the longer the the distance, right? So if you can imagine, uh, you've been somewhere and somebody's singing, right? And it's like, oh, like that. That's pretty much an example of it. Oh, so it's long distance, uh, and then the smaller dishes have a higher frequency, and they have a shorter distance. So me, you know, it's like that kind of thing. Uh, that's the best analogy I can use f- for that. And um, so just, you know, if you understand how that works, how that comes about, you're going to have a very good, you're going to be able to talk it through. You're not going to know everything because like the little tidbits of information you may not know, we are going to have an understanding of it and how it works relative to whatever. Uh, for instance, like let's say you're, you're on the phone with somebody and you're in a call center. If you understand how that, that works, you know, you're doing support for what Linkway, Link? No, I don't know. Uh, Direct TV. You're you're gonna understand. Oh, okay, because you can because you're gonna have that visual representation of oh, okay. I see because you're gonna know the problem. Okay, well, okay. So it's the maybe they move. You're gonna ask questions like, well, maybe they move the, you know, uh, maybe they were um, uh, mowing right, and the mower hit that. Uh, that direct TV um, pole, which connect to the dish and then move the dish. Oh, okay. That's the problem. You know, you, you never know, but it just helps you in troubleshooting uh, or maybe, um, maybe there's dust. I don't know, something in peer in peering or in the way of that dish. Um, Cause that's a line of sight, right? So on the dish itself, they have a feed horn. They call them feed horns or it's a, it's a, Low noise block, uh, LNB. Basically, it's like this. The satellite internet or the information or the frequency comes down from the antenna, or I'm sorry, the satellite, and it goes into this um, this uh, dish. And that, you know, all that information comes in. And what happens is the, the LNA, low noise amplifier, basically imagine a... Uh, you're getting signal from a satellite and it's all this information. And what the low noise amplifier does is say, okay, I see there's a signal there. I'm going to amplify that. Um, It's almost like, you know, when you zoom in uh, somewhere, it's zooming into that, that signal, low noise amplifier, basically. 
it's going to just amplify that noise, which is a carrier signal, basically, you know, um, and it's going to, um, that's, that's how it works. And, um, so let me tell you a little bit about the frequencies, right? So you have, you have your, um, your VHF or uh, VLF rather. The VLF is for maritime, uh, signal. So like you might have a, a buoy somewhere, um, or a lighthouse could have that. You have your, um, HF or I'm sorry, your MF, which is your AM maritime radio. And then your HF, which is shortwave radio. So that, I think that's like, um, uh, gosh, Mor Morse code, not Morse codes, mm, ham radio, something like that. And then you have your VHF, which are TV, um, FM radio, right? And then you have a UHF, which are the cell phone and the GPS. And so th the range for that, or the frequency basically, right, is um, it's in it's in gigahertz. So um, the the uh, VH or VHF is what about I'd say twenty uh, tw twenty um, twenty gigahertz, right? That's a it's K band twenty gigahertz to say twenty six gigahertz. That's for VHF. That's a K band, um, and then your UHF, your TV, your cell phones, cell phone towers, right? That's a KA band, so that's 26 gigahertz to say 30 gigahertz, something like that. Okay, so now we get into the silent in the microwave. This is KA band uh, antenna, or K, I'm sorry, KA band, right? Satellite frequency. So KA band is. Um, you know what? I was, I was wrong. Actually, I'm wrong on that. I'm, I apologize. It's not actually. So let me just back up a little bit. The VHF is, is 30 megahertz. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. And then, uh, UHF or cell phones are 300 megahertz to three gigahertz. Excuse me. Right. And then, um, uh, satellite communications are three uh, three gigahertz to say thirty gigahertz. So that's your microwave, that's your satellite communications. And then you have those <laughs> giant things, those um, these uh, ones that go into outer space. They're forty, looks like forty. Well, they're more than forty gigahertz or more than forty gigahertz, basically. And those are just the probably the giant ones, the hundred foot, sixty foot antenna. Um, yeah. So the, yeah, K, KU band is used for satellite communications and, uh, KU band downlink is used from 10.7 gigahertz, 12.75 gigahertz for direct broadcast satellite services. Um, okay. So the KA band is also for satellites. Uplink is either 27.5 gigahertz and 31 point gigahertz bands and high resolution, close range targeting. Oh, radars. Okay. So that's interesting. I didn't know that one. So they use it for something else as well. Hmm. Odd. Um, yeah. So also, yeah, the C, the C, so the C band, they have the C band, they have the KU band and the KA band. Those are for satellite communications. Uh, the C band it says used for uh, full time satellite TV and raw satellite feeds, commonly used in the areas that are subject to tropical rainfall. Since this C band is less susceptible to rain fade than KU band, rain fade is like, um, uh, gosh, it's like imagine like a rope, and the rope it, it's a long rope, right? And you got rain that's dropping on it, right? And the heavier the the rain, that rope is going to shake a little bit, and that's what rain fade is essentially. It's it's kind of a weird analogy, but you you're just um, anytime you put any rain or any any snow, heavy heavy snow or fog in 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 between a satellite and the or a microwave or a, or sorry an antenna and a satellite or a microwave and another microwave dish basically, those are little. Uh, 
like fog is rain, like uh, moisture. Anytime you put anything, it basically what happens is it refracts off of that that light. So rain is light. So it's just a, it, um, it's a mirror basically, right? So water it'll refract off of it. So when you when you have rain fade, it'll just like refract reflect or refract off that that rain, uh, and then it'll de degrade your signal a little bit. I mean, if you have a long range signal, it's really going to degrade degrade that a lot. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, what goes into some of these things. So you have uh, frequency division multi-access, and you and you have TDMA. So there's FDMA and TDMA. FDMA is frequency division multi multi-access, or just multi, multi multiplexing, I think. And then you have TDMA, which is time division multi uh, multiplexing, I think it is. Anyway, so FDMA is like uh, a frequency. So, you know, you might have, say, in um, a couple different signals that come in. And um, one, let's say it's from, let's say from, say, uh, 4.5 gigahertz, okay, to 5 gigahertz. So that's your, your range that's coming in to your antenna. That's on the internet side. So you have the um, you have the spoke, which is your your dish at your house, right? And then you have a hub. So it's a hub and spoke. That's the whole reason that that's what that is. So this at the hub level, that's where the internet comes in or that's where the internet is initiated from. At the hub level, that's a big giant dish. He, um, that antenna is going to receive a bunch of signal right at the same time and it has to cut it up and say okay i want all these signals in but i want to i want to receive them in order basically frequency so um there it can receive a you know it can it's capable of receiving say four to five gigahertz so it'll just like say okay i'm going to use i want to receive this on this band or um on and this device uh on and this on this device so for instance your dish in your house is going to send up say 4.1 gigahertz somebody the next door neighbors 4.2 gigahertz so on and so forth um so that's frequency division multi uh, multiple like plexing the other one is uh tdma so that's time division multi-access it's the same frequency you basically it's like um i'm using 4.1 gigahertz my neighbor's using 4.1 gigahertz right but we're not sign sending our signal at the same time maybe there's a a, a, a millisecond or a, a second delay, something like that, that I'm sending my signal from his or hers, my neighbor, basically. That's all that is. It's just a time. Uh, you're in line and you're waiting to send your signal, basically. And that works in the background in the software and uh, you know the the device itself. So that's that's the how it works, basically. So that that's how it works essentially. So. That's um that's kind of basically it. You have other things such as um let's see, gosh. So you have uh let's see here now. You have different um standards, like you have a T one, you have a T three, um that's more for say um communication. So you might have some some microwave dishes have a um a capability of like a an optical carrier uh, capability. So, you know, let me just go over the T1 and all that first, right? So, um, T1 is a, uh, a um, T1 is described as a, um, let's see, uh, ba well, it's, when you say T1, you're talking about, okay, your speed, right? Your speed of your internet, your traffic, whatever. Uh, this is kind of related to satellite, so um, I'll just tell you what it is, right? So you, the T1 is is 1.44 mega, megabits per second, right? Um, the T2 is 6.31 megabits per second. The T3, you've probably seen like, a, you probably heard somebody say, oh, it's a T3 line. That's 44 meg a second, megabits a second. So just to put that in perspective, now all of these are back and forth. Um, 
was it asynchronous? Yeah, synchronous, asynchronous, yeah. So it's back and forth, meaning I'm sending 1.544 megabits per second, I'm receiving back. So how is that different than what maybe what you have now? Uh, you have, let's say you have a, a cable modem and you get from your ISP, you're getting, I don't know, 50 meg a second, right? So you go to speedtest.net and you test the speed and you'll say, okay, I'm downloading 50 meg a second, right? But in my upload is five meg a second. Like, oh, well, what's the difference? Why is the difference? Um, that's just how the, that's how they operate. That's how the ISP operates. Whereas a T1 line, you're dedicated one point, you know, you're going to get 1.5 up and 1.5 down. It's like really nice. You, usually that's for like um, people that do um, like companies that host websites will have that. Uh, they're sending information and receiving information. So 6.3 megabits, that's pretty fast, right? And then 44 megasecond, good night. Um, that's huge. That's that's giant, right? So that's that's a T1. And then you have um, you have optical carriers. So an optical carrier is the speed in which traffic or data basically is transferred. And some of your dishes, a lot of your dishes are OC3 um, antennas. So they're capable of handling one point, or sorry, 155 meg a second both way. And then you have um, an OC9. I haven't really seen. I see the most I've seen, I think, for, for me, is an OC3 uh, satellite or and microwave, basically. I, I do know they have, um, like, for instance, the there's a, tr let's see, OC1, OC192. I've seen an OC192 before. I've worked on one of those. It's a Scream uh, ATM device. Um, OC48, I've worked on one of those. They have, like, an OC768 I think Alcatel makes that and and that gets into like the gigabytes per second or something like that or a lot. And that's that's typically used for uh transatlantic signal from New York to uh oh, oh, uh Ireland, right? Ireland? Ireland, yeah. Ireland? Yeah, Ireland. Um or Spain or uh yeah, they typically use for that. Um, those that's called what they call that is long haul communications or long haul uh, traffic. That's just this huge amount of that huge pipe. So um, let me just go over them. Right. So an OC one is 51 megasecond. That's back and forth. That's huge. An OC three is 155 megasecond. That's dedicated back and forth. Um, an OC nine is 466 megasecond. An OC-12, <laughs> 622 megasecond. Wow. OC-18 is 933 megasecond. An OC-24 is 1,244 megasecond. Wow. An OC-192 is 9,953 megasecond. An OC, uh, well, an OC-48 is 2,488 megasecond. Of course, uh, OC one. Oh, let's see. Let me Google really quick. OC, what is it? OC one, OC seven sixty eight. Let's see. OC seven sixty eight speed. Here we go. Okay. OC. Okay. What is? Okay. OC seven sixty eight. Okay. Okay. Just want to know what it is. Wow. That's really, that's amazing. So it says it's, uh, let's see. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. We just Google uh, Wikipedia here. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Here we go. So an OC768 is 32 39,000 meg per second wow so AT&T has one obviously um an OC wow 1920 I've never seen that before that's 99,000 megabits per second wow 
gosh. And then an OC3840, that's uh, 200 gigabits per second. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy traffic, dude. That's that's just crazy. I, wow, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, and let's see. OC, let's just curious, right? OC uh, 768 cost. I'm just curious about that. Let's see. Oh, gosh. OC768. How much does OC768 cost? Okay. Hundred fifty. Okay, here we go. OC48 costs 150000 a month. $2.4 million? Wow. Whoa. That's amazing. That's... You know, who who has that? I don't know. Probably Yahoo or Facebook or one of those folks that probably have that stuff. That's cool. That's awesome. I love that. That's nice. Yeah. But um, so all those Al so Alcatel makes makes a lot of that stuff. I do know that. Alcatel makes that. Um Juniper makes that. That's that's why um so Cisco is known for like in you know in a in a building from state to state right um, whereas Juniper is like wherever the internet starts to the other internet so like from um, like the big um, optical carriers like these Juniper has that so um, that's just a vendor that makes that and then Cisco makes the usually they make the the smaller range ones the smaller ones from like an ISP to your house, right? They'll make that stuff um, or ISP to ISP, but the big ones, wow, that's Juniper. So I hope this uh, this has been informative for you um, and I'd like to thank you for viewing this podcast.